from Nick Then Gaming, and today I want to show you how we can generate some nice modular mazes. So we look here, and I am just pressing a key, and I am generating a new maze every single time. Now these mazes you can do to create a very interesting and unique platformer level. You can even use it for basic idea creation if you're not sure how you want to design your level. You can use them for um, actual mazes or labyrinth uh, levels. You can use them for the JRPG top-down style maps and such. And we'll have ours fully customizable. So. Let's get started. Now, I've got my project open. I will actually delete some things that I was working on before. So I just have my scene and I have my camera. I will even delete this. Yes, I want to delete it. And I will delete my script. So we are starting from a blank slate of a scene. Now, the first thing that we want in our scene is we want to add a UI scroll view. Now, if you don't know how to get to this menu, just right-click anywhere in your hierarchy window. Make sure it's the hierarchy and go to UI and then go to scroll view. If you do not see scroll view, make sure that you are using the latest Unity Editor version. I am using Unity Editor 2021.3.16F1, which is the latest as of May, March 9th, 2023. Um, you can also press the plus to go to UI. I actually think it might have updated to um, 2021.3.2. Two zero, but I have not yet had an update notification, which means there cannot be anything too important right now. Okay, and either way, we want a scroll view. In the scroll view, we can keep it named as such, but we do want to select the scroll bar vertical, scroll bar horizontal, and the content child of the viewport, and delete everything. On the viewport itself, we will create an empty object. The empty object I will name grid and I will say add component and let's add a content size fitter. The content size fitter will have a preferred size for the horizontal and vertical fit and we will add a component of a grid layout group. The grid layout group I believe we will want a vertical start axis, but we will look again to double check my reasoning. We also want to cl left click on the anchor presets holding Alt and Shift and select top center. You can also just type in these values manually if you are unsure of yourself. Then we do want to select the viewport and remove the bottom padding so it is at zero. We want to select the scroll view. We want to select the anchor presets of the scroll view, alt and shift, and then stretch horizontally and stretch vertically. I will also be removing the image component and removing the canvas renderer component. Then I will drag the grid over unto under content. As for the canvas, I want to change it from a constant pixel size to a scale with screen size. For my display, I will be using a 16 by 9 landscape view. So I will use a 16 by 9 ratio for my reference resolution. I will actually be doing a 200% larger than 16 by 9, so 3200 and then 1800. And for the screen match mode, I will have it expand. I will save everything. Then I will uh, go to my grid. I will right click and I will create a UI image. This image will be the prefab image. Prefab means a prefabricated object. Okay. 
now I will drag that over into my assets folder. I will delete it from scene. Then I will right click and I will say create a C sharp script. This C sharp script, you can name whatever you want, but I will call it the maze generator. I will then drag and drop the maze generator onto my canvas so we can add our variables easier later. Then I will double click on the maze generator so I can open it in my favorite script editor. Okay, now over here, let's add a comment for our maze generator. Um, and I do have a pre-made comment just to give a shout out to a Wikipedia page. So these maze algorithms that I will be showing you, I was able to create them with help from the Wikipedia maze generation algorithm page, which I received uh, today. To give you a little preview of what this page is and what we will be talking about, let's look at it. So, Prim's algorithm, this is the uh, one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. We will be making mazes with Prim's algorithm. That is my favorite one, actually. Uh, this is using a depth first search. We do not have a depth first search algorithm, but it is not too terrible to implement. It is just not one of my favorites. That's, you know, what the depth first search does. The horizontal passage bias, I do really enjoy how this looks, but we will not be using it. Um, but we're also not using Kruskal's algorithm, but we are using a randomized Prim's algorithm, and it will generate very similar to what you see here, where it just kind of picks a random path, almost. Um, we are also using Wilson's algorithm, where it starts to create until it gets to a certain point, and then it uh, sets that path in. Uh, we are not using the Aldo's Broder, but we will be using a recursive method. I do not believe we are using the recursive division, but we are using a recursive method, which is fairly simple. We are also using a pure, a purely random algorithm, which you could hardly call a maze generator, um, but it still sets a precedence for everything else. Now, we do want some variables. So our first variable will be for the maze size. So I'll say half or pound sign region, and I will call this the maze size, then pound sign end region. And in here, let's get a serialized field of the int width. Uh, let's add a header now that we have our first variable. And the header for this will be the same as our region, which is maze size. Underneath int width, we want our int width at start. Now you will see later why we have these values, um, but it's pretty much so we can regenerate our maze without having to clear all of the values in the maze. Um, but yeah, there are some issues that occur from this, but I do enjoy it the best. It is the uh, fastest, the best way, but okay, I will change my code a little bit. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Serialize field int, and then we have the width, and we have the height. So this will be the x and the y values. Um, after that, we want to have a a serialized field of a boolean value that we will name generate 
or we'll say has border. Now a default for the width, I will give it a width of 30 and a height of 10 and a has border, border to true just because I like those values. You can most definitely change them if you wish, but they will be different from mine. Now, we also want another hashtag region for our uh, maze values. And we will say hashtag or pound sign in region. And let's first take a byte, a multi-dimensional byte array that we will call map. And we also want a multi-dimensional image, so type I-M-A-G-E and then press control period and add uh, Unity Engine UI. You should see it added at the top of your full file. I have it at line four. Okay, this will also be a multiple dimensional a multi-dimensional array of images, which I will intuitively call images. Um, and let's give a quick comment definition for these. So this will be the byte grid where we generate our maze. We then will say that 1 is equal to a wall, while 0 is equal to the path. For the images, this just holds the last images of the grid. And you know what? Instead of an array, let's just say uh, list I make ge. And then this will equal a new list of images. So I did keep it as an integer or an image array like the bytes before because I was using the uh, static generation and I would just override the images. But we are going to do something sacrilegious with this where we destroy all of the images on regeneration and then instantiate them again. And in Unity, creating and destroying things multiple times is a large waste of resources, but it also keeps us from editing the size of our maze easily. Okay, so now we have the maze values. Let's get some hashtag region of room values. I will copy that. Let's do a pound sign or hashtag in region. And then inside, I will do a serialized field of int number of rooms equals zero. Then I will do a header set to the same name as our region. And I will have a uh, bracket range of zero to 10. You can increase or decrease this, these values as you wish. You do not have to follow perfectly with me, and I do recommend breaking something and uh, seeing how it works then. Then we want a serialized field int of the min room size, which we will set to zero. And it will take a range of, oh, let's say zero to 20. Let's go crazy with it. Let's copy that, paste it, because instead of min, we want x, max, maximum room size. Let's paste it one more time, and let's say room distance from wall. And I will reduce that from 20 to, from 0 to 10. Okay. So we can minimize our maze values, minimize our room values. So now another pound sign region. This one will be our generate values, which of course we will go in pound sign end region. 
have a header. We will get an error on this because we have no values below it, but we are adding our values now, which is a serialized field of the int of the generation type. We are then going to add another header. This header will say zero is for the random generator that we have. One is for the crawler generator that we have. Two, oh, let's add a space here, okay. Two is for the recursive generator that we have. Three is for the Wilson's generator that we have. And four is for my favorite, the Prim's generator that we have. Now, just because it is my favorite does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that it is the best. And then range will go from 0 to 4. Like our options, we'll set the default to 0. Then we want a serialized field of a G-R-I-D-L-A-Y-O-U-T G-R-O-U-P grid layout group, which I will give the name of grid layout. Now, in order to use grid layout group, you do need to have Unity Engine UI, which should already be added to your script. If you don't see it there for whatever reason, it's gone. As I said, you can hold control and press period to access this menu and automatically update it, add it. You can also right click, go to quick actions and refactorings, and then add it that way. But okay. Then we have the grid layout group, which we'll have to assign. We will add a serialized field for our game object, which we'll name prefab. And we want a serialized field for our transform, which I will call my instantiation location. Then we want to create some values for our crawler. So let's have a header and I will call it the crawler values. For this, I will have a serialized field of an integer that I call my vertical crawl count, which I will set equal to five and I will even give it a range of 0 to, oh, let's go crazy and say 20. I will copy and paste this. I will go back. Instead of a vertical, it will be the horizontal crawl count. Okay, that's just about all we need, but there are some extra values that we can add to make it a bit more um, editable, I suppose. So I will even take a serialized field of an integer, which, you know what, I don't want them. You can add them if you want when we get there, and I will tell you when we get there and what values you can add, and you would just add them here if you want, but I am going to skip it and leave you in the darks thinking, well, what's he thinking about? Um, <laughs> So now we want a, another pound or hashtag region, which we'll call the random seed area. This is a wonderful thing that I really enjoy. And if you have no idea what it is, that's perfectly fine. I like to keep you in the dark, but we will talk about it in depth later. We'll also have a Boolean value for the use random seed which we will set by default to false. We also want to copy this text because, oh, you guessed it, we're going to add a header of the same name. Then we want a serialized field of an integer, which we will call the random seed, and we will set this to 42. Why not? Go crazy. Then we want a sys dot random make sure you are using system dot random and not the default unity engine random okay and we will 
uh, not set that to anything right now because we will be assigning it in our start. So now we are going to our start function. Although I think before we go into our start functions, let's go and write out the other functions that we want. So over here, I want a void regenerate. Regenerate. And, you know what, actually let's do, um, let's just call it generate. Because in our start, after we initialize things, we're pretty much just going to call the generate function. Uh, before, I would have a regenerate where I refresh values, but as you saw, I am not using the width on assignment, so we can destroy all of our children, and after we kill all of the children, we are going to just create new children that we can then kill later. Um, now, if that sounds dark, blame programming. <laughs> because the object assigned as a child of another object is called the child. And we will be destroying the children. But I will show you how to legally destroy children later. <laughs> how fun. Uh, after our generate, we do want some basic functions. So as we saw in our maze values, no, we saw this in the generate values. Yes, we have random crawler recursive Wilson prims. So let's go to the bottom. Let's type void random generator. Then we want another void and this will be our crawler. And at this point, let's just copy from generator to void because, wow. Okay, crawler generator recursive generator. We have the, after the recursive, we also want the Wilson and Prims. So Wilson's generator and then the Prims generator. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, that's everything. But we do have one more thing, which is void add room, which we will talk about later. Actually, no, we will delete that because it's going to go into our start function um, after generate. say add room. Now let's add some comments, two things. I will find a few more links for you. So the add room will slash slash and it will um, add rooms to the maze if selected. Okay. Um, this is actually a fairly simple thing to do, so let's go and, uh, no, 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 we're writing comments right now, let's write the comments. <laughs> so, for the prims generator, I will give it a pre-made comment, a generate a random maze following the prims algorithm, and this is a link to the prims algorithm Wikipedia page, which I obtained today as well. We have the Wilson's generator, which uses a very similar posting, just, you know, saying it generates a random maze of Wilson's. The recursive will recursively run through the maze until almost all parts of the maze have been filled. And it only creates a non-connected path. So that's to let you know what that is. The crawler generator will generate a random maze by crawling through the maze horizontally and vertically, let's say, and slash or vertically x and y times until all until a wall is reached. And we will assign x and y in the inspector. And if you see, we are not actually calling it x and y, we are calling it the 
vertical crawl count by the horizontal crawl count. So I will actually replace those lines. Hopefully you did not type it out exactly. The comments do not matter. They are more for helping you and those who see your code. Now, this code of mine will be tossed onto the GitHub, so I do want to make it very readable. The generator will create a new maze when the R key is pressed. So, um, in the update, that is really just a single line of code, so sure, let's be, have update be the first thing that we do. I do have another summary that I want to add to my update, um, which when we press the R key, it will regenerate the random maze. Or it will um, generate a new maze. Okay. Now, update. Okay. So if input dot get key down gkd for get key down and if we press the key code dot r then we want to say uh, generate however because I am doing things a little bit different I want to say that I am going to destroy all of the images so I will say For each image I in images destroy I dot game object and then generate. So it's just going to destroy all of the children of our instantiation location. Now in our start function, we are going to type out all of our code and then we are going to go through our generators. Uh, so first in our start function let's hashtag Regan and we want to assign our default values. Okay there we go. And then pound sign end regen. Okay so then we will um, assign a new we will uh, assign the random in the generate where we actually need the random okay so for the uh, yeah, so pretty much all we need here is we need to say that the map is equal to a new oh um, in our update. After we destroy all of them, the i is now set to null, so we do need to say images dot clear. Okay, if we can even do that. Okay, so this is equal to a new byte multi-dimensional array of width, comma, Actually, no, this would even be what height. So I think we might even be doing this later on. Yeah, so I have decided to do things a bit differently than what I did in my other code, so I'm going to cut this. We will just do generate and add room for now. So in my generate function, that's where I'm going to be assigning the default values. So I do want to go here and I want to say that the random is equal to use random seed question mark do we use the random seed if we do then we say a new system dot random and we need to assign the random seed here otherwise colon we will do it with no randomness okay and you will find out what the random seed does later. Ha ha ha, keeping you in the dark. Okay, then we want to say for int i equals zero, 
i is less than the width i plus plus increase i by one then for n a b c d e f g h i j is equal to zero j is less than the height and then j plus plus then we say that the map at i comma j is equal to one which is a wall i believe let's double check i yes one is wall zero is path now because this is a single line for the for statement i will do this amazing thing where i turn my for state my double for statement into a single line wow so compact okay and that's all we need for our assigning the default values um yeah it's map equals new map, yep 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 okay mm. and we have the images equal to a new list of images and then we're clearing it when we press the R so it should be fine okay so we are assigning the default values now um, slash slash determine the generation algorithm to use which we will say is switch of the generation type and we will take case one colon break semicolon copy one two three and then we will say default break now case one is case four case one is case three case one is case two okay now in case of case one case one we are doing the crawler so let's type crawler generator case two is going to be the recursive generator there it is all the way at the bottom case three is going to be the Wilson those Wilson twins look awfully rich as they say in the white chicks the case four is going to be the prims there it is prims algorithm uh, prims generator and finally the default we will just type random generator okay now that's our basic switch for running things and after we run things we do want to add some rooms so I will even be taking this from here so start will pretty much just call generate how intuitive okay so then it will add the rooms and then we will start to we have not assigned the add rooms function yet but that's fine so then we say um, instantiate and display the maze so first we say if uh, has border if has border else or otherwise if it has the border then we say um, okay so we are skipping that because I'm not doing it anymore but we do want to set the constraint of the grid layout group so if it has the border then we say the grid layout dot constraint count is equal to the width plus two in our else this is equal to width okay so it's equal to the width plus two because we have the left and the right with a border on it so that's two then we want to loop through them and instantiate our stuff so let's go here and let's say for int i equals zero i is less than width i plus plus oh sorry 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 sorry, sorry. i is less than width plus two i plus plus then we say for int j equals zero j is less than the height plus two j plus plus 
then we want to say that the um, image image equals a uh, equals instantiate our prefab at our instantiation location. Now we need the image, so we will type git component of the type image, and then we will finish that off. And we will say um, continue to next int if at border. So for checking if we're at the border, we uh, are not sure if it's Mexico or not, so we say x equals, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, sorry, not x, i equals zero, or uh, j equals zero, or i is equal to the width plus one, or j is equal to the height plus one. And if any of these or statements is true, then we want to say continue. Otherwise, we will say that the image dot color is equal to the map at i comma j minus one dot no is equal to one question mark is it equal to one then it is a wall and we want to set the color dot and we want to set it to color dot white otherwise we want it as color dot black because it is the path that our whatever we have will traverse upon and then we want to say uh, images dot add image so it is not hoisted and we can destroy this child later now let's copy this for statement into our else but this time instead of I less than width plus two and i is less than height plus two we are just doing width and height we also want to say that this um, continuance never happens because we are never at the border we also want to say that this color is at i and j not i minus one j minus one okay and that's all we have for that, so let's minimize that, and we want to start working on our add room. So in add room, I will say for int i equals zero, i is less than the number of rooms, i plus plus, then we say int start x is equal to our random dot next of the room distance from the wall as the minimum with the width minus the room distance from wall as maximum. Let's do comma, then we want to have a start y which is equal to the uh, random dot next of uh, the room distance from wall at, oh wow, if you guessed this, congratulations, at the height minus the room distance from wall, comma, now we want the room width, which is equal to a random dot next of the minimum room size all the way up to the exclusive maximum room size. And then we will say, wow, you are very intelligent because you guessed room height is equal to the random dot next of the min room size, comma max room size. So we are truly creating random rooms. 
then we will say for we can't use i anymore, so we will say for int x equals zero, x is less. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. For int x equals the start x, x is less than the width. Um, minus the room distance from wall and the x must also be less than the start x plus the room width. Okay. Finally, we have x plus plus. Then we want to do it again. So 4 int y equals, did you guess it? Yes, it does equal start y with the y is less than the, wow, very intuitive, y is less than the height minus the room distance from wall, and the y is less than the, yes, it is the same as above, the start y plus the room height. And yes, we do say y plus plus, good job. Okay, and for this we will just call map at x comma y is equal to zero. So we set it to a path and since we are only having one line here, we can do this fun thing. So it's a, just a single line and it's not wasting so much space in our code. I mean, if you want your code to be 10,000 lines long, sure, do that. It might also improve the readability as well, having the uh, separated four statements, but it's up to you, the uh, programmer. Okay, um, yeah, it should be good with our generator, it should be good with our update, it should be good with our start, so let's jump right into our random generator. So for our random generator, we are going to do something very, very amazing. So for you know what? Let's just go and copy this. So I'm taking from my add room the four statements that we just typed up. We'll say for x equals zero, x is less than the width x plus plus, y is equal to zero, y is less than the, uh, sorry, not width, height. Then we say the map at x and y is equal to the random dot next of 0 to 2. And this will complain because it is not a byte, so let's do the parentheses and cast it to the byte type. Now, why do we say 0 to 2 if we want it to enter a 0 or 1 value, well that's because 2 is exclusive. So it goes from the next of x to y minus 1, which means this goes from 0 to 1. You can get 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. If we do 0 to 5, you can get the value 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you want it to go to 10, you type 0 to 11 because then you get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you want it to go from 1 to 2, I recommend doing 0 to 2 plus 1, or you can do 1 to 3. But okay, enough babbling, that's how it works, and that's what our random generator does. It's super complicated, isn't it? And we can save it, we can go over to our screen, or, yeah, our screen, I'll call it a screen, and we want to... So, before we can fully run this, you know, I have my width to 30, my height to 10, which means I should see 10 up and then 30 to the side. We have the generation type at 0, we have everything else assigned, but in our grid, our start axis should be vertical, but if you see my constraint is no longer set to what I thought I set my constraint to. It needs to be a fixed column count. If you do not have a fixed column count, then this will not look correct. It will not work correctly. 
it will not properly display. But if I press display, look, you can see a randomly generated uh, maze. And you can see that when we click here and we press the R key, it does, or at least it should have, oh, it is not fully deleting everything. And I see why it is not fully deleting everything. It is not fully deleting everything because we are not always adding our image. So let's go to our uh, generate to the assign no to our if has border and else. So this mostly matters in the if has border. We just need to add the image dot add to above our continue statement. So that was fully my bad. Make sure you apply that change. I will mention it one more time. But let's go through and let's play this again. And it should work and regenerate properly. Okay, and then R. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, so just one little hiccup. That's a pretty good thing. Now, you can see that, hey, that kind of looks like that QR code stuff that I've been seeing all over the social medias. And yeah, it does kind of look like a QR code, and sure, you can kind of use it as one. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure that you might need to register a QR code somewhere. I don't know. I'm not a QR code expert. But anyways, um, that's it. You could also set the grid to set to the top left, that way you don't have, you know... But anyways, depends on what you wish. And yeah, I think I will change my rec transform to top left. But okay, so that's our most basic one. That's our generate, or our random generator. And as you saw, we did our whole random generation with two for loops and a single line of code. So now let's create our crawler. The crawler is a bit more intuitive, so we'll create this using multiple functions. So I'll say void crawl, which will take an integer x, it will take an integer x min move, it will take an integer x max move, we'll copy all of this, we will make a comma, and you guessed it, we are going to replace x with the letter y. Why do you ask? <laughs> because, well, we need x and y. Then we will say while true, while true, if your app crashes when you run the crawler generator, it is because you made a mistake with your while loop. So, map at the x and y is equal to zero. Then we will say if uh, random dot next of zero to two, this means it's either zero or one, is equal to zero, we have a 50-50 chance of getting this. Then we want to crawl in the x direction. So we say x plus equals a random dot next of the x min move and wow you are very smart x max move and then we will copy this and have you guessed it yet what do we change x to yes because we have already seen an example i don't give you credit for that one but yes we do set it to y then we will say if x is greater, or if x is less than 0, or x is greater than the width, minus 1, or the y is less than 0, or, have you guessed it yet, y is, oh sorry, not just greater than, I think I want it to be Sure, we'll say greater than. Y is greater than the uh, height. 
Now, I believe there might be an issue here because I might want to say um, minus 1. But we will get that issue, and then we'll see. And if all of that, then I will break, which stops our while, our while loop. OK. Now, we have two more functions that we want to add in our functions. We will say void, and we will say crawl. Um, vertically. Now in the crawl vertically, we will, oh wow, very good, yes, we will call the crawl function, and the crawl function will take a random dot next of one to the width, comma, the minimum move will be the value of negative 1, while the maximum move will be 1, which is 2 because it is exclusive. Then the y we are just going to set to 1, 0, 2. And if you have guessed it, then you get a gold star. If not, uh, do it again, but, but better, horizontally, OK. And we will, uh, let's just cut this all out like it's an infested pus bubble. And we'll change width to height. So 1, 0, 2, random dot, next, height, negative 1, 2. And that's what we want for our crawls. So let's actually call these. But we want to be able to call it multiple times without changing our values. So I will say int curvy. Yes, you are very curvy. The curvy is equal to the vertical crawl count. The cur h. You are curhy. <laughs> is equal to the horizontal crawl count. Then we say while the curvy or cor cur h is greater than zero or yeah, or the curvy because I used cur h is greater than zero while curvy or cur h is greater than zero, then we want to say if curvy minus minus is greater than zero, then we want to call the crawl vertically function. And alternatively, if cur h minus minus is greater than zero, then we want to call the crawl horizontally function. OK, so what this does is we say if curvy is greater than zero, and then we subtract one from curvy. If the cur h is greater than zero, do this. Either way, we will subtract 1 from cur h. Uh, you can test these out with printing the values, you know, give you an example of what exactly minus minus does. But our crawler should work now. So let's go over here. We do need to change the canvas so that it is set from our random traversal to our um, Crawler traversal, crawler traversal, golly. Um, and then we play it, and oh, perfect, we have an index out of bounds array. Now, I believe this is because I was not saying negative one. Let's go over here, and yes, it is saying it's over here. So let's do width minus one and height minus one. Save. And I did mention that before, but I just wanted to leave it just in case to kind of test it out because it, it was a very quick fix. Let's go over here and let's play it and let's see. Let's wait for the script assemblies to reload. And there we go. Okay. Now to give you a better example of what exactly is happening, let's do a single one horizontal crawl. Press R. And... I think our horizontal might be moving. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is horizontal. So 
you can see that it starts here at the left and it moves over and it goes over down and then up again and it hits the wall. This one starts here, goes down, goes up, goes over, goes around a few times, goes over, down, over, up, starts moving down again, and then it goes and it hits a wall. So if I were to add like 11 of these, you can see that it's going quite crazy over here. Um, and yeah, a wide horizontal crawl might be a great way to generate a fun platformer map. Okay, um, to also give you an idea of what the random seed does, I will set the generation type to random. This will work with both types. You know what, we can experiment with both. So we see that it is generating, you know what, let's just do 10 by 10, make it easier to see. Okay. So we have this randomly generated. We generate, it's all totally random. Yeah, I don't like it there. I'm going to keep it in the center. There we go. Not enough padding on my viewport, I suppose. Okay. So yes, we have that randomly generating every single time. But if I go to my canvas, and I type use the random seed and I press random, 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 it regenerates once, but then we see, oh hey, it's not changing anymore. We can even see that if we give this a name by um, my special object. I love this object. I hope it never goes away. I want it forever. And I press over here and R and it's dead. Because we are destroying the grid every single time and then remaking it. Uh, for another example, we can go over here and we can destroy all of these children. Go over here, press R. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, that one's not working too well because we have destroyed the images and it's still looking for images. But okay, you get the point. So yeah, now we have this thing again. But I go over here and I change it back to 10 and I go over here and I say yes it is random again and I press R and oh look it's the same exact thing that we had before. So what the seed does is it will create a consistent random thing. It will create the same random thing over and over again. But okay, so we now have three more um, generators to go through. So the next one that we want is we want the recursive generator. Now the recursive generator will go through itself um, over and over again. It will call the same function time and again, which is what recursive means. So it will recursively um, go through itself. Now for the recursive generator, I do find that my code needs a border to it. It must have a border. So to work around the border that we have on it, I will create a new byte, a new multi-dimensional byte array, which I will call rmap. You can, of course, give this any name you want, but following my naming convention will make it easier for you to follow this tutorial, probably, and it will create a new byte map of width plus two, comma, height plus two. Okay, then I will say, okay, we want to grab the same thing from our uh, crawler, let me do Windows V for my pasting history, and I want um, this one? No. Oh well. So let's type it out by hand. It will take just a second. So for int i equals zero, i is less than the width i plus plus for int 
j equals 0, j is less than the height j plus plus, then we say our map at i comma j is equal to 1. So we initialize the R map. Then we want to have a thing called directions. Um, so we say, a, have we added that? OK, so we have something that we want to add above our class. This is going to be a helper class. So this helper class will call our map location. So I will just say class map location, and it will take a public, actually let's just not call it public, let's call it an internal, I like that, internal int x, and an internal int y, this should be okay. Then we have an internal map location, a constructor, which will take an, oh wow, those dogs are having fun, int y, and we will say this dot x is equal to x, this dot y is equal to y. Okay, let's close that, let's go down here, and then in our recursive generator, we want to say that we have a list of map locations, which is called our map locations, and we set it equal to a new list of map locations, and let's give it some default map locations. So let me find exactly where I am at again. There we are. Okay. So the map locations we want is we want a new map location of 1 comma 0. This means move to the left 1. We want a, not a boo, we want a new map location. Let me just, uh, let me copy this. There we go. Okay. A new map location of 0 comma, not 0, point 0 comma 1. Okay. Oh my. We're just all sorts of. Okay. Then we want a negative 1 comma 0. And yes, I am sure that you have already guessed that we want a 0 negative 1. So left, right, up, down. Or uh, right, up, left, down. I believe it should be. But okay. Then we want to say we want to call an inner generate function. So let's say void inner generate is going to take an int x and an int y. And then under our map locations, we are going to call the inner generate function. And we will pass a random dot next of 1 to the width plus 1, comma, a random dot next of 1 to the height. Yes, very good. It is height plus 1. Okay. Now we need to loop through it, and we want to assign the map to this. So um, assign our map to map. So we say for int i equals for int i equals zero. For int j equals zero. Let's move this back a little bit. It's going to be a little uh, erroneous for a little bit. We will say that the map at i plus 1 comma j plus 1 is going to be, is that okay? No, 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 this needs to be plus 2. I am terribly sorry. Um, so up here we need to say width plus 2, height plus 2, because we are adding 2 to here. Okay, so 
uh, map i plus 1, j plus 1. Oh, I'm terribly sorry again. This is all my fault. Golly, how can I do this to you? Okay, the map at i comma j is equal to the r map at i plus 1, j plus 1. Whew. Okay, so the i is equal to 0, i is less than width, i plus plus, j is equal to 0, j is less than height, j plus plus, the map at i, j is equal to the r map at i plus 1, j plus 1. And that effectively removes the padding that I want to have to run my recursive generator because we are counting neighbors. And you will see my count square neighbors now. So I'll say void count square in e i g h b o r s, which will take an int x and an int y, and it will say why you ask. Ha ha ha. Int count. Oh, sorry. I'm not. I'm so sorry. That's not a void count square neighbors. That's an int count square neighbors, and ow, my ear itches, equals zero, um, and then we want to say return count, well, why are we just returning zero, what happens in between, we're talking about that now, so we say, if the x is less than or equal to zero, or the x is greater than or equal to uh, greater than or equal to the width plus 1, or the y is less than or equal to 0, or the y is greater than or equal to the height plus 1, then return 5. Otherwise, we say if our map at x minus 1, comma, y is equal to 0, then we say count plus plus. Let's copy this, paste it, remove the minus 1, copy it again, 1, 2, paste it two more times. Okay, so we have x minus 1. Let's do x plus 1. Then we have y, yes, very good, minus 1, and then y, can you guess it? Yes, it's plus 1. Okay, and that will count to the left, to the right, to the top, and to the bottom, or actually uh, left, right, bottom, top in this uh, area. Then we want another thing. We want a void, and we want a shuffle. And what this does is it will... Um, shuffles the directions to look in. Okay, so what this does is it will take a list of map locations, which we will call a new lock. New locks. Like you got a new lock of hair. And it will be equal to a new map location. Then we say while map locations dot count is greater than zero, we will say int rand is equal to random dot next of zero to the map locations dot count. Then we will say that the new locks dot add map locations at rand. And then we say map locations dot remove at rand. And finally, we want to say that the map loc dot add range of the new locks. So pretty much 
we clear out all of our map locations by randomly assigning them to our new locks list and then we return that new locks list pretty much. Did we do that in our shuffle? I'm sorry, I put that in the inner generate. Golly, we need to put that into the shuffle. Okay, now let's look at our inner generate and test it out. So, inner generate, we say if count square neighbors is x comma y greater than one, then return. Do we have more than one neighbor? Um, then we need to say that the r map our map at x comma z is equal to zero. So we set, oh no, I'm sorry, ter terribly sorry, x, y is equal to zero. Then we want to call the shuffle function. Wow, so amazing. Oh. And then we want to say, we want to call ourself again. What do we call ourselves? We call ourselves inner generate. And we say x plus d x plus map locations at zero dot x. Uh, we can also do this in a for loop. So, sure, 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 sure. We'll do this in a for loop. And then, uh, y plus the uh, map locate map locations at zero dot y. Close it out. Let's highlight and cut it because we want to say for and i. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So let's do a for each for each map location map location in map locations, and then we will just uh, delete map location with the S. There we go. Ah, so what this does is it says we will generate it, we will shuffle it, and then we will look in the random direction. If the random direction is greater than one, then we keep moving along that path, and then we will backtrack. So what this does is it backtracks until we fill up almost everything. So we can go in and we can look at how the recursion feels. Oh no. Okay, good. <laughs> Looks like I might have to come back to finish our last two methods in like an hour or so. I need to go and feed. Okay, so um, we've set the generation type to recursive and we will now hopefully view with no errors. If we do get errors, that's perfectly fine. We want errors so we can fix them. Uh, invalid operation collection was modified. What is this? So that's why we don't do that, because we are modifying the collection. Then what if I... Yeah, we do need that out of the shuffle, don't we? Okay. Um, let's move map locations into here, and we will just randomly assign them with the shuffle function, which we want to, is there a way we can randomly do it? Eh, maybe not. Okay, so we will just grab the shuffle function and we will put it as a child of the inner generate. This way, it can shuffle things, things aren't going to be all messed up, and each inner generate will have its own special list of map locations.
Okay, so let's test it again, and as much as I enjoy seeing an error that I can easily fix, let's hope that we don't. And there we go. Yes, what a beautiful recursive thing. And you can see, maybe we start right here, we go, and we start looking over here, we go here, we go back, we go over here, we go over here, we hit a wall, and then we backtrack all the way over here, we go over here, you know, who knows which direction we go, maybe we go over here until we go all the way over, and we go up, and then maybe we hit a wall over here, and then we backtrack all the way to here, and then we go here, maybe we go this way first, and then we go here, and we hit a wall over here, and we backtrack, and this can be wonderful to see step by step of how it works. You can do that by assigning colors and using debug.break, but that is beyond the scale of this class. I'm just uh, giving you quick explanations of what we are doing. Okay, so we just have two more um, random al or algorithms left to look at. So the next one we are looking at is called the Wilson's algorithm. And so this one as well will create itself with a natural padding. So we are going to use the same method that we used in our recursive generator to remove the padding. So without further ado, Let's actually just go into our recursive generator. Let's copy our R map and let's paste it into our Wilsons. Now, I believe, let me check. Yes, we will also use this in our prims. So while we're at it, let's just post paste it into our prims. Okay, so we also will need our directions list from recursive, which we will also be using in our, yes, we will also be using it in our prims. So let's take the list of map locations and we will paste it into our Wilsons and we will paste it into our prims. Now, we're just getting the prims ready because a lot of the stuff that we are assigning right now is just copy-paste values. Okay. However, we do want another, another empty list of map locations. So this will be a list of map location, which we will call the... Um, let's do map locations, but we will call it the unused map locations. Okay, and of course this will equal a new list of map location which we will not add values to. It will be an empty map locations list. So next we want to get an integer which will be the start x and that will be equal to random dot next of 1 to the width plus 1 and we are going to add a comma and have a start y which is going to be equal to a random dot next of 1 dot yes very good it is the height plus 1 um, and uh, of course we do want to say that our R map at start x comma start y is equal to a pathway or equal to oh I am terribly sorry we are going to set this to Where's one wall? Well, anyways, I will actually set it to two. Let's go with that. Okay, um, now we have our int of limit, which is equal to zero. We have an 
Uh, so the limit is to just keep us from walking too far. It this is to prevent um, loop to prevent excessive loop. King. There we go. Okay, limit is equal to zero. We also want the int last count to equal negative one, and we want the integer of the current count to equal a method called get available cells, which we do not have, so we will press con no, we won't because we want this to be an inner function. Okay, so let's go and create this get available cells. I will copy it. I will go down here. And the get available cells will, of course, return an int. And for this, we will say, uh, blah, blah, blah. we will say unused map locations dot clear. Then we will say for int x equals 1, x is less than the width x plus plus for int y equals 1, y is less than the height y plus plus, and then we want to say, terribly sorry, so let's go down below this, and we want to count our square maze neighbors. We will be using the count square neighbors from the recursive generator, and this is one of the functions that we are using multiple times without changing it. But we do need to pass in our R map. So I will take it and I am going to place it at the very bottom of my script. So I'm just dragging it all down and oh, okay. Looks like we'll put it at the top. Ha ha ha. So let's drag the int count square neighbors from recursive generator and I will put it below generate. I will make an enter there. Let's do that, and before int, I'm going to pass a multi-dimensional byte array called R map. Okay, now we do need to edit a few things in our recursive generator because we have now changed the function of it. So we'll just pass R map here. And I believe that's all we need. Okay, coolios mitosis. Uh, do we want the count square maze neighbors in our prim? So we have another function. Let me make sure that we are only using it once. Count square neighbors, count square neighbors. Okay, so we have a, another special function that we are only using in our Wilsons. So in our get available cells, we will say if count, so now we want something called the integer of count square maze neighbors. So this should be a little bit different. And yes, it will be different. So this will count our square maze neighbors. You'll see exactly what that means. So we have later. We have int x and of course int y. Then we say we have int golly int count equals zero return count and then we say uh, for int i equals zero i is less than the map locations dot count I plus plus then we say that the int next x is equal to 
x plus d uh, x plus map locations at i dot x and then we have next yes next y is equal to the y plus the map locations at i dot yes it is y hokley dokley neighbor then we say if our map at next x comma next y is equal to two <laughs> two two we will say that the count is plus plus I don't know why I'm talking like that okay and then we say return count and that's all we want for our count square neighbors and then we will say in this for loop of the get available cells where we will eventually return the unused map locations dot count we will and actually this will be a uh, single line for loop double for loop so we can say if count square maze neighbors terribly sorry there count square maze neighbors at x y is equal to zero we have no count square maze neighbors then we will say that the unused map locations will add a new map location of x comma y okay and then we return the count of it so that's the get available cells for this we have our count square neighbors we have our count square maze neighbors. The next thing is to do our random walk. So let's actually go back here. Yeah, let's do the random walk first, since we will be using that next. So let's say void random walk will be a function. And then we want to say a list of map location which we will call um, locations in walk and we will set this to be equal to a new, not a boo a new list of map locations okay then we want to get a map location which will a map location which we will call map location and we will set that equal to the unused map locations at uh, random dot next of zero to the unused map locations dot count so we get a random location that is not being used for our next map location and then we want to say int cur x correcty you are correcty and we will set that equal to the, the map location no we don't really need this so i'm going to not do that sorry for the or joke okay so then we want to say that the locations in walk will dot add our okay and we are going to actually just cut that uh, do we use that again let me triply double check Sorry there, control F, let me just double check. Okay, yes, yeah, so we will delete it from the map location and we will just add it to the locations in walk. You know what? We can even 
No, we can't. But we can do this with this. Okay, there we go. So instead of doing all of the other stuff that we were doing, blah, 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 I've realized that this would be a much more concise way of doing it. So we have the list of map locations called locations in walk because this is the random lock. We set it to a new map location with a single value, which is our unused, which is a random selection of our unused map locations. Okay, the next one we want to say int loop loop equals zero. Then we say bool valid path. Is this a valid path? And it is not. We will say false. Then we want to say while. Now, if you have an error, it will probably come from a while loop. Now, okay, so we do want this location. Um, so let me cut this out. We will say um, the map loop location map location equals this we will add it to the locations in the walk then we will say while the map location dot x is greater than zero and the map location let me just copy that dot x is less than what is it doing? Is less than the width uh, plus one, and the map location dot y is less than the height plus one. Can you guess what's next? And the map location dot y is greater than zero oh yes 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 we definitely want to say that and it is not a valid path and the loop is less than five thousand so the loop will pretty much do the same thing as limit where it will prevent excessive looping. I can even paste that down here. Okay, so now we have our while function all set up. Let's actually add some code to it. So the first thing we want to say is we want to say the R map at the map location dot x comma map location dot y is going to be equal to a path or equal to zero. Then we want to say if count square maze neighbor CSMN at oh no at our map location copy that again dot x comma map location dot y is greater than one. Then we want to break from the while loop then we say valley integer for our next random direction. We will call it rand direction. Oh my direction. There we go. Is equal to our random dot next of zero to the map locations dot count. Let me triply doubly check. Uh, where am I at in the code that I have prepared to use as my um, guide? So I'm not just sitting here fooling around, wasting your time and mine. Then we want to say that the map location, you know what, let's just call this a rand low. There we go. That's a better name. So then we will set the map location is going to be equal to the a new map location at map location dot x 
plus the map locations at rand location dot x. Let's copy all of this, and if you guess the next step, then you are wonderful because it is now max. Make sure you are after the comma. If you need to, you can put a space to make sure that everything is separated properly. So we have the x on top, and then we have the y dot y. There we go. Let's just do that. It makes it a bit more readable than a single line thing. Um, so now we have the next one. Now we say if count square neighbors, not count square maze neighbors, ensure that you are doing that properly. And we will say if this is less than two. So if the count square neighbors at our map location dot Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, before we set the map location, we need to set our valid path is going to be equal to count square maze neighbors, and it's going to be at our map location. So let's actually um, cut this out. Let's say int. Uh, C S M N count is equal to the count square maze neighbors. Okay, then let's copy this. Let's paste it in our if statement here, and then the valid path will be set equal to the count square maze neighbors is equal to one. Um, and just for conciseness, I will put it here. Okay, um, so that's the valid path. We also want to go here and we'll say loop plus plus. I think we can even put the plus plus here. So let's try that. I think I'll do loop plus plus there. There we go. Uh, so this will increment the loop by one every time we check this for the while loop, which means we do this, 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 and then we look at the while again, and then when we get to this step, we'll say, is zero less than 5,000, then zero plus one. Uh, so you can, of course, debug log the values of loop in the while loop to see the numbers incrementing. But okay, so in our if statement, we say, if the count square neighbors at map location dot x and the map location dot y is less than two, then we want to say that the yes, then we want to say that the um, the stuff in walk, the locations in walk will have dot add, and we will add our location. Uh, we will actually add our last location. Okay, okay, okay. So this would in fact be so instead of map location here, we are going to say that this is a so let's cut this out. We are going to say map locations at the new map location. Okay. And locations in walk will add our map location. Then we say map location is equal to the new map location. Okay. And we do need to replace this, this, and I believe we also need to send our R map. Yes, there we go. Okay, so some changes that we made is we now create a new map location called new map location 
and we set that equal to a new map location, which is the previous map location dot x plus the random location in the map locations dot x. Same thing with the y. Then we say if the count square neighbors of the R map new map location x and new map location y is less than two, then we add the previous map location to the locations in walk, and we set the previous map location to equal new map location. Um, and we also have valid path, and then it would loop again. Uh, now, at the bottom of our while, we will say if we have found a valid path, then we will say that the R map at our map location dot x comma map why do I keep getting map map location dot y is going why am I doing this <laughs> is going to be equal to zero okay then we want to say for each why am I getting an error oh golly what possessed me to use parentheses want that Okay, then we say for each map location M in, and this would be the locations in walk, we want to, oh my, I did not move over far enough. Okay, there we go. Then we want to say our map at M dot x comma m dot y is equal to 2. Then we will go under it and we will say locations in walk dot clear. Uh, you know what? I do like to set these as a single line, so let's do that. Give it a little bit of space. Okay, so we have if it is a valid path, otherwise or else, we will take this same thing for each location M in locations in walk, and we will set it equal to 1. Um, and then we want to also clear, clear our locations in walk. So you know what, we will just do that down here since we are clearing it both in both our if and else. Okay. Um, so that is going to be the essential function of our random walk. So now we can go all the way back up to before the random walk to our current count. So let's go to our current count equals get available cells. And we want another while loop. Yes, lots of while loops. While you are looping in the while loop, you should do this. Okay, so while the current count is greater than one and the and either the limit is less than 5,000 or the last count is not equal to the current count. So while our current count is greater than 1 and we have not gone over 5,000 iterations of our while loop, or our last count is not equal to this. Okay, um, so then we want to say that the last count is equal to the current count. Let's just do that right off the bat. We will call our random walk function that we just finished typing up, and then we will say our current count, you know what, let's just copy this, because we want to say that the current count is equal to the get available cells. And 
we will also have our limit plus plus here. Okay, now at the end of this, under the while loop, we will say we want to um, convert our R map to map. And to do that, we actually have all of that code uh, in our uh, this thing. Okay, that's the inner generate. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. So assign the R map to the map. And there we go. And that is our Wilson's generator. So let's go back to our scene, our editor, and let's test it out. Uh, we have one more after this, which is actually my favorite. Oh, this is going to take a while. So the last one we will look at is called the Prims Generator. Okay, so my script assemblies have reloaded. And let's go down here, and for the generation type, let's move it to 3. So now we will be looking at our Wilson's algorithms and seeing if there is anything wrong with it. Now we will do one final check at the end of everything. And yeah, sure, look, we've got a Wilson's generated maze. And you see that it's a bit more... Um, it's different than the other ones. So, well, there you have it. Ooh, that's a fun one. Oh no, I missed it. Too sad. Okay, well anyways, that's Wilson's. So, now we are almost done with this video. Thank you for sticking around. So our last one is the Prims Generator. Now, if you have been following along, then we already assigned our R map, we already assigned our map locations, and I think that we should go ahead and let's do space space and add the assign our map to map function that we have been using in our Wilson's and our recursive generator. So now in our prim, we also want to do a thing where we will say int x equals 1, y equals 1, and we will say that the r map at 1 comma 1 is going to be equal to 0. You know what, just in case we change it, we're going to say x comma y is equal to 0. Okay, yes, we do want some changes, so let's actually cut that map location. Let's put it here, and let's go, and we will say, um, so we will change all of this to be x plus. Uh, this next one is going to be x minus 1. Okay, so we're actually changing everything quite a bit, so I recommend deleting the innards of our map locations. Okay, so we have the first one, x plus 1, y. x minus 1, y. Then we have x comma y minus 1, x comma y plus 1. Okay, there we go. Uh, we also want another loop, we will, or another int, we will call it count loops, and we will set this equal to zero. You know what, let's add an enter between these just so it makes it a bit more readable. And now we want a while loop, and count square neighbors is all we need. Okay, so this will be fairly simple. So we will say, uh, while the map locations dot count is greater than zero and the count loops plus
plus plus is less than 5,000. And again, the plus plus runs the function after your assignment or um, check. So it will say 0 less than 5,000. Yes or no, I don't care. But then it will say 0 plus 1. Then it will say 1 less than 5,000. Yes or no. And then 1 plus 1. 2 less than 5,000. Yes, no. 2 plus 1, like that. And so on and so forth. And as always, print it out if you care about finding out more about it. Okay. In the while, we will say that the int, uh, let's call this the r lock is going to be equal to our random dot next of zero comma map locations dot count. So it will pick a random location from here. We also want to say that our from before is going to be equal to the map golly map locations at r lock dot x and our y is going to be equal to the map locations at r lock dot y okay and then we will say that the map locations dot remove at our lock and next we want to say that if count square neighbors of the r map comma uh, and I believe we can pass x comma y is equal to 1, then we want to say that the r map at x comma y is equal to 0. Then we want to add new locations to this. So this will be fairly uh, recursive, actually. So let's... Um, yeah, let's go here and we will say that the map locations dot add and let's copy and paste that four times. Now we want to add the plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one. So control C, control V, control C, control V will actually click, shift, home, control, C, left, click, paste, shift, home, control, C, left, click, paste, control, V. Okay, and um, then that's all we need for that. And after that, we will be assigning our map. And yes, that is our prims. Very prim and pretty. Is that what it means? I don't think so. Anyways, if you're done with your Hunger Games analogies, let's go and test out our prims. So let's save this, let's play this, and see what happens. I am excited for the script assemblies to reload, and there is our prims. We can refresh it, refresh it, refresh it. Yes. Okay, let's test out with not has border. So click here, there we go, and now we get it without border. And I believe it looks ugly like this, I hate it. But if you like it, you like it. So I don't care either way, so I'll add the border back. I'm going to change the width and height to 20. I'm going to regenerate it. Okay, it looks pretty nice. Um, but let's add some rooms. Okay, what if I want four rooms, a minimum room size of one, but a maximum room size of and the room distance from wall can be zero. So let's go here and let's 
regenerate it. And let's see if we can find my room. So I've got one, two, maybe three rooms, maybe four rooms. And could this even be a room? So a room is anything that is more than a single cell. So if I re increase the maximum room size, maybe I say I want my rooms to be big, six and nine. There we go, that's a big room. One, two, this might count as three, this might count as a single room. This, these can even be multiple rooms put together. So that is one of the things with rooms is sometimes you'll get many rooms attached with these. Oh, golly, we haven't been looking at prims. Okay, there we go, that's prims. There we go. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so these are our algorithms for randomly generating things. We can remove the rooms again to look at the pure algorithm. Um, and again, we can go back to the crawler and we can look at what if we just have, you know, 10 vertical crawlers. It will all come down from the top. You know, maybe four. You can even see that one, two, three, four start locations. And wow, that is very impressive. It even actually made it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, um, I believe that's everything. And remember that we do have the random seeds. So this 42 will show the same exact thing every single time you generate it. So if I go through and I say a random of 42 is this. I say a crawler of 42 is this. A recursive of 42 is this. I say a Wilson's of 42 is this. And I say a Prim's of 42 is this. And if you go through again, oh, looky there. Why does that look so familiar? Well, it looks so familiar because you are randomly generating the same thing over and over and over again because we are using the same random seed. So this has been a long video. I hope that you are interested about these maze generations. I hope that it will really help you out and enhance your games. You can definitely use these in your levels. You can use these to um, have infinite levels, really. Um, if you do use these, I would love to hear about it. Even send me a link to your game so I can look at it and, you know, play it a bit. If I enjoy it, of course. Um, and, yeah, if this has helped you out, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and definitely let me know in the comments because that I read the comments and I like to hear that. So, thank you for watching and have a great day.